Well, China has made an historic new ruling this week that restricts children's video gameplay to only three hours per week as a way of curbing addiction. So would this work and should parents in Australia follow along the same path? Joanna Lando is a leading expert in children and technology from Western Sydney University and she joins me now live. Joanne, great to see you. Thanks for joining us. Right now we know that many Australian children, they're spending a lot more time at home because they are in lockdown. Are Aussie kids kids more susceptible than ever to becoming addicted to gaming? Yeah, and I think it's quite, we probably have expected the, the, to turn to the screens or video games because they don't have many other options, do they? Um, so not only are they playing video games more, but they're watching others play video games. So that's kind of a new pastime. In fact, the last 12 months, 100 billion hours have been spent by kids around the world watching others play video games. So all this time gaming doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to become addicted to gaming, but obviously there's a, an unbalance here, you know, lots of time on the game, uh, less time outside and playing sports. So obviously there's lots of health implications from that, but also potentially, you know, they can, when I talk to kids and, and I do my research, they're very comfortable in their room playing video games and just being around the screen. So I think a, a potential problem that might arise is when we finally do emerge from our homes, is re-engaging them back in the classroom and, and back to hanging out and friends and, and, and getting away from their screen. One billion hours. That's a phenomenal amount of hours around the world. Uh, but what is the difference then between being an enthusiastic gamer and then being addicted? Yeah, and a lot of parents ask me this, and there's a very clear sign. So the World Health Organization has classified gaming disorder as a mental health disorder. And a, a, a child or an adult uh, needs to display three symptoms um, over a period of at least 12 months. So one is that they're, they're gaming intensely and the gaming is increasing. Um, a second one is that they continue gaming and even though other things in their life are falling down around them, school grades are going down, um, you know, work or friends, all those kinds of things are going downhill, yet they still continue to gain. And then there's also an absolute intensity into the ways that they view gaming. As you might expect kind of any other addiction, you know, there's an intensity in their attitude and it's the same thing uh, with video gaming. So it's a real, not about time, it's about intensity and attitude. We saw this week, of course, China making that ruling, limiting video gaming to just three hours a week. Would something like that work in Australia? I think some parents would really like it. <laughs> when I talk to parents, it kind of takes the heat off them. I think it's very difficult somewhere like Australia where uh, children and families have a lot more freedom. Um, and also... China are doing this as a way of curbing gaming addiction, um, but the World Health Authorities have made it very clear it's not about time on, it's about attitude. So it's not necessarily going to stop um, children developing any kind of uh, gaming addiction. But I think also there's also the thing about, you know, uh, the internet always adapts and people always find a way. So already in China, we've seen them move to VPNs or move to other platforms that are held overseas to start gaming. So the internet always adapts.